Welcome to the Gatekeepers Podcast. I am David Legowski. We also have here with me Knives, Cam, and our very first guest, Jay, uh, the Slim Creative Robertson. How are you doing today, guys? How are you guys doing? What's going on? What's going on? Hey. Everyone doing it's good? good to have you, sir. You are our first guest, man. Thank you so much for hopping on. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much for the invitation. Uh, oh, of people. course. And the, the big thing we're talking about today is going to be uh, portrait photography. Not not so, uh, not just, you know, how to take good portraits, but also do, how do you creatively take portraits and how do you find inspiration to take creative portraits? So uh, we're, we're now going to toss it over to the two main portrait photographers in this group right now, which is Cam and Jay. But really quickly, uh, Jay, my favorite thing about your portraits, which I think I've told you before, is the way you use light and color simultaneously. Is there like a method to that for you where you just, or is it just, I, you see it in your head and you're like, I gotta go with that. I'm, I'm, I'm so curious. Just before, so you even, when it, before you even say anything, Slim, like based off what you just, last thing you said, um, your name David, like sometimes I, it, I agree with that one. It's like sometimes I just see it and that's it, but I'm gonna let Slim take it from here. Yeah. Yeah, so like usually it's um, it's just like I I see a, an image. So my um a lot of my um a lot of my work is of people of color, um, mm-hmm. and we naturally have a warm tone. Uh, no matter if they're light skin, dark skin, red, brown, you know, it doesn't matter. We have this this warm undertone. So I want to create light that complements that skin tone. Whether it be um, natural light or artificial light or a mix of both, because sometimes, because <laughs> mm-hmm. sometimes um, I'll mix both. Like I'll yeah. supplement a little daylight with with a little bit of continuous lighting just to give me like that extra pop. Real, that's, more, uh, it. Really shows too. It really shows that you're very thoughtful through that. I know that when uh, one of the things when I, I I got a buddy of mine. He lives in North Carolina too, and he is um, he has. Um, darker skin and i was taking photos of him once and then while i was editing the photos i i i was editing it with presets that i've always shot with uh white people and mm-hmm. the first thing he did was he i was like what do you think of this he was like why do i look purple and i was like huh what? <laughs> and i was like oh shit you're right <laughs> he's like why'd you do that to me i was like i, I didn't mean to it's just the preset right. he's like, change it i was like all right all right i'm sorry i'm so sorry <laughs> Yeah, and that and that's like one of the reasons why I'm kind of very intentional with how I light my subjects and also just how I shoot in general um, is because um, a lot of photography out there doesn't really complement our skin tones well. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, they just use the oh. default. They use the default of what they have, and um, no shade, but it's it's usually you know catered towards. White that's not shade. That's not that's not shade. That's just facts. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's yeah. not shade. It's it's very much a hundred percent facts. Um, I got a question for you, um, Slim. Have you ever come across this issue where you know you're trying to light um a person of color, and you can't pull their eyes out, you can't see their iris, like if you've ever noticed. Is it because of eyelashes? Eyes, no, it's not because of eyelashes. Because even let's say we let's say we did it with you know knives and um David, right? Right. You you can light them any type of way. It doesn't matter which way you're hitting them from the light. There, put that hat back on. <laughs> <laughs> Professor X, you oh, <laughs> <laughs> Like you're going to be able to see the full extent of their eyes, but a person of color, it doesn't matter what shade they are, it's going to look like a black hole. Right, because our, our eyes are naturally dark. They're, they're naturally dark, but even like, for instance, like, cause me and my friend, we, we tried this in various forms just to like one, we wanted to see the eye because like, if we look at each other, you're going to see our eyes, no problem. Right. Right. But if you do this with photos, it always just turns into a black abyss where with their, their skin tone, it doesn't. So have you ever like came across a situation where you've been able to figure that out or has it, has it ever been anything you've ever even thought of? I, I haven't thought of it. The The most I've thought of it is um, when I'm trying to get catch light in a client's eyes and they have these big ass eyelashes on. 
and it's blocking my that, light from hitting yeah, hitting their that, eyelet, that hitting I their understand. eyes. But like I, what I'm saying is like if I literally like, you probably you're not gonna really see it here, but like if I put my eye up to it, you won't see like the details in that eye. Right. And, and that's just because, you know, the iris and, and what's the other thing called? The cornea or, or whatever? Mm-hmm. Pupil, yeah. The pupil. Yeah, they're, pupil. They're similar in color. So unless you got a flash right next to your face and it's so, blaring in your eyes. It's, it's actually crazy. really funny. I have I've a photo. That. I have a photo on my flash drive of uh, same buddy as before. Once I finally learned how to edit you know, a darker skin tone properly. He let me take more photos of him. Uh, The Mm -hmm. way that I actually got it was exactly what uh, you just said, Jay, was uh, the flash was like here. And I shot on Mm. an 85 millimeter uh, Mm. focal length to be able to cut the light out. That was the only way I was able to do it. And that's, you know, that's just my way. And I, I remember thinking to myself, like, this is really difficult. Is it supposed to be this difficult or do I just not know how to do this? I wonder I wonder if it's a combination of the um pupil color but also the skin color around the eye cuz so cuz we know that you know white reflects light and exactly. you know black but the so colors I'm thinking, affect the other colors water. around them. Right. Yeah. I think it just bounces in there and it just it can't it, go nowhere. It, it, it makes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like it makes their eyes pop because of so the skin. So I guess whereas getting that light very very close would be the only way it's a, it's a, it's a i have a question for for both cam and slim um do you think where technology is right now we're all we're all canon users here um what is it like and i'm genuinely curious you guys I think got a lot of respect Bowl. for me well, <laughs> we all, hold, we up, all hold up hold up hold up we all respect hold each other no hold cam up, do not ruin this moment cam I'm sorry don't no, do it no, I'm, I'm don't you do it motherfucker this, this is fucking happening slim you should know i have a cannon but i'm what? primarily a sony shooter so i can yeah. wait fine. well well let me let me say one it's thing fine. and then I, we can get back to nas what Nile said yeah, yeah i respect sony See, i'm a cannon man, user but if you if you bring up a Nikon, we got a problem, and I'm gonna have to leave the podcast. <laughs> no, we we all, we agree. all agree. We all agree. <laughs> we all in we all agree that way. Yeah, I, you all in I, I will that say I, I did a podcast with uh with Quinn Aiden, uh, who's also on TikTok. I know you guys have probably yeah yeah, yeah we're buddies on TikTok and, too. Yeah, and, and we were talking. He was he he shoots with everything, and I was I was reminiscing. He asked me about basically he wanted to know my whole list of cameras that i've shot on i went through 10 canon cameras and there's something about the canon form factor that makes me feel like a photographer and then when i hold when i hold a sony camera on the subject of sony since you guys brought it up it feels like it feels like a black monolith to me like it does not feel it feels like tech it doesn't feel like Mm. like a dslr Mm. at least nikon do i wish the sony form factor felt a little more like a, like I felt like I was but, a camera person. It's the, but it's it's the, the ergonomics. Thing. They designed it's the ergonomics, ergonomics for me. To, exactly. To not they they designed to feel like that though. Like that's literally how they design their camera. I know, I know, and and and, and it, it it I like aesthetics, and I, the tools matter. You know what I mean? Like tools matter. Like I'm not going to use a hammer that doesn't have the wooden handle, right? Like I want the aesthetic uh, of a shit. hammer the way I know that the hammer's supposed Ru- to be there, rub- right? Rub- rubber hammer. I wanted to ask day. you guys. There was a, there was a Super Bowl commercial. Uh, uh, I think it was about a Google phone, the Google Pixel, and they were talking about how their technology, the commercial, yeah. was actually pretty effective. Their technology for reading black faces was better, and for illuminating black faces and exposing for black faces was better. Um, not people in blackface. People of color faces. Okay, so <laughs> I wanted to ask you guys with your with your expertise in, in this tech, how is it with with uh, face tracking with black people versus light skinned people? Like, is there a difference? Uh, is the technology there yet? Do we have to worry about that? Because Cam brought up the eyes and the exposure so, of the eyes. Well, that's so, why I, I really like I, my R six is because that eye tracking is on point. Yeah, I'll be honest, like, especially with this never... next. Never came across that issue at all. Um, it picks it up yeah. perfectly fine. Um, um, it, as long as lighting is well, it's it's pretty damn. Yeah, if there's if there's no light, good. it's it's it, exactly. it'll, it'll hit the back. It'll get the backdrop <laughs> before it hits hits someone's face. <laughs> or or it'll draw or it'll draw just a big block block over the head, and that's the focal point. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. no, nah, don't, don't I remember. Don't, I remember the Super Bowl ad that you're talking about, Knives, and I remember looking at it like, I feel like this is one of those things where it's not racist, but it's absolutely racial. And we've all taken those photos where 
We taking those photos or that one? Unfortunately, the the our one black friend doesn't really come out the way they're supposed to when it's taken on a phone, especially okay. right? right. And it's just like, right. damn it. Um, DSLRs or mirrorless cameras, maybe not so much, but cam. So yeah. I um back in college, I used to play this game called HVZ, Humans versus Zombies. Whatever, judge me later. All right. So mm -hmm. one day, just, <laughs> I heard you. So one day, I was no scrolling through Facebook. Somebody tagged me in a photo. Right. So I'm looking through the photo. I'm like, why is this goddamn photo? <laughs> Why am I tagging this? Because like it's just a big photo with a group of us there, but they tagged everybody in it. So I'm like, I'm not in this damn photo. Why the fuck oh, am I damn, in this photo? Damn, right? I know where this is going. <laughs> down bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that's what I'm saying. Look, I was wearing a black shirt also. <laughs> and, oh and no, there's a black spot right there, pointing <laughs> at something with a gun in his hand. And like all I saw was the blue and orange. I'm like. Yo, that blue and orange is floating in the air. What the hell? Look closer, and there I was. I'm like, uh. Damn. Man, it looked like a whole Death Eater. <laughs> so, jeez. I, I had an issue with that commercial since you brought it yeah. up. Yes, yeah. please. Most of those I didn't, pictures I didn't that they direct shown, it, so go on. Yeah, most of those pictures that they shown wasn't yeah. because the subjects were dark. It was just because the, the, the lighting was just terrible. <laughs> like, yeah. most of those were just lit. <laughs> Bad, Poorly. like the one, think, like the I, one where the sun your, was behind the yeah, person. Yeah. Like, come on, like that's your. But mo your average person that has these devices don't know dick about taking a photo and don't know dick about You're exposure. Right. You're right. So You're I right. think that's what the average like American photo uh, photograph looks like. Probably, I don't know. I'm not trying to defend the Google machine. No, but. no, I I get it. But as a photographer, the, the and we were watching it, I was like. Too. This isn't about dark skin. This is about y'all not knowing how to find the light. <laughs> <laughs> no, I and, feel and, bad. Uh, I feel bad for the photographer they hired who was like, oh, yes, your resume looks beautiful. You have these wonderful photos with gorgeous light. And so I was like, thank you. What is this job again? You have to re, re, uh, reverse engineer all of this and give us shitty lighting to work with to make sure this phone works. <laughs> I have a question, so, and I ask I ask every photographer who takes a plethora of beautiful photos and videos of uh, of of attractive women. Um, wow! And I have a I have a question, <laughs> and, and I ask everybody this because um, everybody has like gives me the same answer. Or I don't want to see if you're going to give me the same answer. Mm -hmm. um, how do you book? How do you? approach a model and say hey i want to take your photo without sounding like a pervert like you know and you want them to dress a certain way like a creep exactly like how do you finesse that i'm sure by now you're totally used to it by now your work speaks for itself right and people probably coming up to you knocking on the right. door right well, yeah, he's got so, almost 10,000 followers on instagram yeah his work you were getting there. when you almost were getting there. started when you were getting started how did you take the photos you want with the subjects that you want with the aesthetics that they, that you wanted and without sounding like a creep right so I'm glad you said beginning out because now I just I have good looking models that just book me. So it's easy now. But back then it was more that was, so that was a flex. That was a flex. Good for you, man. Let's give that let's give this guy around. <laughs> <laughs> um good for you, man. Good but, for you. But back then, honestly, it started with like my friends. So Ooh. like I, I just had good looking I had good looking friends. That's just another flex. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. So so yeah, I started so I started with them and the thing is pretty people like pretty people. And if if I if I can show people oh wow she's beautiful, I could do photos like that. And they're like, "Oh, I can do photos like that too." And I just approach them like, "Hey, um I know you're trying to build your portfolio. I'm just trying to start out as well. Let's let's make some magic." Um, and then I also started very early, I started creating, um, this gigantic Pinterest board of just shit I wanted to shoot. So let me like, ask you this, um, what is, so how do you handle this question? Cause, and I, I get this question all the time and I fucking hate it. I can't stand it. It's the worst question in the world for me. Uh -oh. Um, what's your concept? What's my concept? <laughs> and is this is this a is this a model like asking you exactly. what's your concept? Is this a model it's asking a, you what's the concept? Yeah, it's a model because like I've I've reached out to people quite a few times and like we said like yeah let's work you know what's your concept and I'm like 
I just wanted to meet Do you, up. Have you shown? Have you shown them? Have you shown them like pictures? Like oh no, yeah, they see they see my body of work. Like everybody. No, no I'm see, saying like like, like, like like have you sent them like a a, a, so, a set of images that. So, not all the time. Like most of the, most of the times, I I don't have an idea, and I'm like, look, we you have a dope look, you know? Let's just go out into the streets. Let's meet up, shoot, get to know each other, so that way I can decide on, okay, maybe we can go ahead and do something like this, right? Or so, sometimes it is you're like, you know, I this is the idea that I have. Right. I think you will work for you will work work, right. work great for it. What do you know? So sometimes it, I, I think, get what you're I saying. Think, I think even if you don't have a concept, and even if you don't even shoot the images that you have. Having three or four images that just work like as a default and then saying bring extra outfits and stuff like that and we'll play around and we'll develop from there works. Well, I guess I have to try that one. And, and, and that's what I, I usually do. Like I'll um I'll have so if when I do like a collab with a model, um I'll I'll say, here's my here's my Pinterest mood board. Pick some things that you like that you like that you'll be open to shooting, um, that you that you uh, like to see yourself in. They'll send me back a whole bunch of stuff. It's usually just random stuff that nothing goes together, and then out of hmm. that, I'll pick some things, and then I'll tell them to pick something. So we have at least two looks mm. going into the set that I really want to do myself and something they really want to do. Mm-hmm. And what I usually oh. do is I shoot theirs first. So they're comfortable. It's something that they wanted to do, and by the time we get to mine, they're warmed up, and we can really uh, mm-hmm. go at it and create some stuff. So, what do you prefer? Because I know you're 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 big on your lighting and things like that. Like your lighting has a character of its own in its images, from what I've seen on on IG. You have very impressive work. Um, what other type of characteristics do you look for when you're shooting? Hmm. Characteristics, as in like the uh, setup, no, or not, prop, I mean, props, not props or anything like like for as far as like you know body movement or poses or facial expressions, things like that. Right. So usually, because you know there like you know there are some people who are really good with posing, but can have crappy facial expressions, and then there right. are people who can have great expressions. But crap, but can be crappy at posing. But yeah, like, like well, that's a good question. Like, what would be your tier list of like your priority to make sure that you have X, Y, and Z figured out? Posing is one thing. Is that the most important thing to you? Facial expressions. Is that the most important thing? You know, etc. Facial facial expressions is probably the most important thing to me because I can help with body placement. You know, open up your body to the light. You know, don't don't hide your limbs behind yourself. You know, and stuff like that. Keep your chin up. You know, things like that. But the facials are so important because no matter if everything is perfect and the face is off, it's going to ruin the whole image. Cause the first thing people look at is the person's face. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I know I've run into a lot of people that basically don't breathe when I'm shooting them. Like their, their mouth is like this, like this the whole oh, time. So what God, I usually end good. up telling them to do is like breathe, like take a breath. Like, you know, let, let your mouth open just so, a little bit. Like you're taking uh, a, a, a sip of water or a breath of air, you know? Okay. Mm-hmm. So, like, what are some other techniques that you might that you might put out there or that you might want to give out there to help, like, for t- upcoming photographers or um, upcoming portrait photographers that will help them get their models out there? Because as you, me and you know, like, when you're first starting out, you're working with people who haven't done this before and they can be really, really shy and they'll be in their head. Like today, right. I had to work with a guy, and I had to tell him, "Like, look, you know, I've noticed that when people get in front of the camera, they try to become a different person. Mm-hmm. When it's like, I don't want you to be a different person. I actually, I need you to be you. I need you to be yourself, and you got to coach that and pull that out of them. So, what are some techniques that you go about do, using to do that? Mm. Music is probably the biggest one. Mm. Taking a speaker play, up. I, I always, I always have music on a set." whether it's outdoors, whether it's in the studio, whether it's in their house, I'm always having some music there. And um, mm-hmm. usually when I ask them, so what do you want to listen to? They be like, oh, I listen to anything. And I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> this, is a, this is a black dude thing for sure. I've seen so many really? black dude photographers take a little speaker out, not just, or maybe even just use their phone. I've never seen a white photographer do that ever. 
No, he's he's not he's not lying on that. I haven't seen it either. You know what? Well, so I like, guess I'm the fucking outlier because when I was doing portraits, that's what I did too. <laughs> but like, what what kind of mu- like do you do you ask them what kind of music do they want to kind yeah. of loosen, loosen I, I, up? So I usually ask yeah, them. Yeah, you what, make a playlist they, for them. I usually ask cool. them what they what they want to listen to, and I have you know my phone or my iPad with Apple Music on it, and I have like a preset playlist that I have. Um, that's just Real like. That's real vibey, just different creative like artists on it. You know, Georgia Smith, uh, Xavier mm-hmm. Omar, just real vibe stuff. Um, and what's then, another what's another kind of direction tip that you do to make them feel more comfortable or sexy? Um, really, just kind of hype them up. Like, mm-hmm. even even if I don't personally like their outfit choice, <laughs> 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 you still hype them up. You know what I'm saying? Like. Sure. Tell them, okay. tell them that no matter. So like I have a lot. So a lot of my clients aren't models and a lot of people don't know that. They'd be like, oh man, you only shoot models. Like, no, a lot, a lot of these people that come to me aren't models. They're, they're, you make they're, them look like models and that's and not I make them look thing. like models. And that's what my job is. I want, yeah, I want each yeah. and every one of them to feel like they could be on the cover of a magazine. Mm. And that's so, what so, my, uh, let me ask you Slim. Like, do you hit them with the snap snap? Yeah, yo, this is yo, you kill it, right? Do, do you ever? How, how many times do you go about saying that? Even though the I do that at the beginning. At the beginning, I do that at the beginning. Mm-hmm. So what mm-hmm. I usually do is I'll say, um, so I give them this whole spiel. So this is what. So say a client came in and they ain't a model, they a little shy. They look great. They do actually do look great. So I'm not lying to them. They look great. Mm-hmm. I'm saying so. Modeling is two things: it's mindset and it's movement. When it comes to your mindset. Today, mm-hmm. you're a model. You're modeling whatever your name is for whatever we're shooting for, whether it's the graduation, mm-hmm. your birthday, uh, your brand, whatever. You're a model today. And oh, what I love about that is you're giving them permission out the gate yeah. to, be, to be fun, to be silly. Yeah, to be sexy. just go you're for it. Like, it's photography. Like, we're going to see these images before I touch yes. them. Like, <laughs> just yes. try it. So I'll be yeah. like, so I'm, so I'm like, don't stop every five seconds. Like, should I try this? Should I try that? No, nah, I just do it. Like, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? You get awkward, get weird. Like, it, it, that yeah. is like the number one rule of art is just go for it. Whatever you have, right. just do. Whatever's just up do here, it. like, yeah. do it. Don't don't just stop. So yeah, I tell them that, and I'm some, and I tell them like, up until today, you've seen a thousand images of people doing what you're trying to accomplish. Just just try what they doing. You know what I'm saying? Like you hired me as a professional to make sure you look good and I'm gonna correct yeah. you as we go. So don't worry about that. You know, just go for it. And then the movement thing is like just simple stuff like um I tell them not to like grab their joints, like no wrists, grabs, no elbows, nothing nothing that looks like if someone looked at the image, they'd be like, Oh, what's wrong with her arm? Is she hurt? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. let me ask I actually you, like, I have a question. Uh, I have a question, oh. Jay. I want to know what you think about this. I always have this philosophy when it comes to uh, after shooting, picking photos, is that the most important job of a photographer is not to know what the lighting is or how to pose or anything like that. The most important job of the photographer is all of that plus the ability to pick the best looking photos without having to worry about what anyone else thinks. Mm. What do you think about that? I agree, mm-hmm. but I also want to add that I don't always pick all the photos. Okay. So, so my so sometimes you pick the ones that you don't think are the best. No. So what I do is I so a lot of times so if it's a paid shoot, mm-hmm. so if it's a model shoot, I'm I'm picking the photos unless I know the model and I trust the model and and I'll let of her. Course. Yeah. Pick you have photos. a previous relationship. Yeah. Right, we have a previous relation. If I don't know you, I'm picking the photos because you're not about to have my work out there looking crazy. So, <laughs> <laughs> what I what I do, what I usually do is, um, if it's a client, I'll call the photos, but I will only send them photos that I will I would like to edit. Ooh. So Ooh, that's good. no matter that's so no smart. matter what that's they smart. pick. It's, it's gonna look good. A it's, a, it's a good looking photo Smart at man. the end of the day. You know what I'm now, saying? Man, like is, it probably ain't like, my top my top mm, ten, but we're all, you know, if we're all we picking shot, up that nugget right there. That's right. So it, this is like, this is something just, this is something I've been meaning to share this whole time. Uh Cam Knives, remember when I said on here that uh 
if you charge crackhead prices, you're going to get crackhead clients. And then I of quoted course, yeah. someone. This is who yeah. I quoted. <laughs> Slim, this is him. Oh, wow. <laughs> so well, yeah. on that note, I, I, I am curious. That, Slim, what is your ratio between uh, paid clients and non-paid clients? Mm, I'll say over are the last... Com- are you comfortable with that? Yeah, I'll say over the last... Let's say the last five years. Last five years, I'd say it's about 70-30. Last two years. Last two years, 80-20. 80-20 paid. Yeah, 80 paid. Can you can can you walk me through the – I'm curious about this, guys. I know they, these dudes are, like, salivating with, like, picking your brain about the artistry for shit, for sure, and I, I want to give them that time. But no, 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 I'm no. no. You, and Cam, other... you and Cam are doing the whole business of I'm doing the artistry shit. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, exactly, exactly. So I, I do care about the business, right? Like, that's what I said, yeah. yeah. I know yeah. you care about the artist stuff. But the, the business side, like, um, where, how did you get to your rates? How did you graduate from, you know, free to fee? And uh, and how do you negotiate with models and and you do you turn down models? Like, can you walk me through the business side? So, what was your first question? How did I get to my rates? Yes. So I got to my rates. Um, so what are your rates? Are you comfortable disclosing those? I, I, I don't yeah, don't so, if it's not public. I mean, it is public. It's on my website, and if they're right. on my website because they're non negotiable. And your website is where again? TheSlimCreative.com. Okay. Your fees. So, um, I'm not leaving the house for anything less than four hundred dollars. I like the way this guy thinks. Yeah. So yeah. I like so the way four hundred. So four hundred is my lowest package. Uh huh. And what and does that get you? So that will get you um, up to an hour and a half of time. And I say up to because I don't, hmm. I don't feel like people should be like, I need to, I need to shoot this whole hour and a half. You don't. I mean, if if we can get mm. what you need in forty five minutes, then that's it. Bye. that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm curious on that note. What, I'm sorry, I crazy brain right here, but like, so I'm a model. I reach out to four hundred bucks. Cool. Up to an hour and a half. Great. I know my. I'm good. You know, I'll probably crush it in thirty. Whatever. Like, the uh, talk to me about um, like I've never understood this about any photographer, and I probably should have asked Cam and David this, but like, how, who brings the shit? And like who books the stuff? The model doesn't do that. Like the the model just shows up so, with multiple clothes and maybe a makeup artist. Are we talking? Thing? Are we talking like a, a professional model? Well, so is this model being, being, is this model being are, represented? Who, who, booked, who booked who? Who booked who? Uh, well, ha, uh, well, or is she, this a she, collab? She, she, or is this a she's collab? Booking, no, not a collab. Not a collab. She's booking you. She's a professional. Booking me. I, I don't want to say she's a paying client. I don't okay. know if she's professional. It, or not. She's a paying client. Okay, let's say she's a paying client. I have services yeah. on my website for a makeup artist. Um, mm-hmm. I have it's not on my website, but I do have a, a hairstylist. I have a wardrobe stylist that I work with. So if they have Who questions about that, brings the wardrobe? That, they bring. The yes, wardrobe? I have. I have and, people that will bring the wardrobe them. or style or style oh. what you already have. And so you don't do that. Nah. Wow. Why, why see, would I do dude, it? Like that, I'm a photographer. That's the magic I'm not. Book. I'm not a hairstylist. I'm not a makeup artist. So this is the thing, and, and David's laughing his ass off because I, I'm a filmmaker. I'm a filmmaker, right? And, like, I, I'm a DIY filmmaker, so I light the scene. I stage the scene. Right. I talk to the wardrobe people. Right. I do this, you know. I right. fucking hold the light and the boom right. and press the red button. Right. And, uh, do all the things. Right. You know, but I can't act and do all that, you know, all at the same right. time. So, like, you hire I'm a professional so to, to do it. You, you're supposed to, right? When you're, you're yeah. supposed to. That's the way. And you know, but, as a director, but, that's the job for sure. I mean, I have done it, and I and there. I do do it. But I'm not doing makeup and stuff. But I will help you with your wardrobe. I, I am. Would, I absolutely am pay well, from your fee. Do, do you do they get a cut like their wardrobe? No, that's an add on. That's an add on. Okay, so say they don't pay for. I got you. So say they don't. Then pay they got to get their own. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so the rendezvous. Talk I to me about the rendezvous. I love the way you think, Slim. So, oh, I love so, it. so, they so I me. say, hey, I say, hey, March twenty eighth at March at seven p.m. Seven p.m. You know what? And and I'm a dumbass model. I'm not even a model. I'm a hot chick, right? I'm just a You're hot late chick, for your hot. appointment then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That we're we're going back in time. So if and if I were to say, you know, take my photos. I love what you do. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll bring, I'll bring, I'll do my makeup and I'm bringing right. three clothes. Here's what the clothes are going to be. Right. Um, here's what my hair is going to be. I'll do two right. different hair things. Right. Um, 
And then, like, what about locations? Do I take care of that, or do you take care of that? Well, I'm a I'm a primary studio shooter. I have my own studio here in uh, Raleigh, so nine okay. times out of ten, we're shooting in my studio because I know what backdrops I have, I know what lights I have in there, I know what props I have. I in feel there. like that's also part of the experience. So, correct me, correct me if I'm wrong here, yeah, Slim, yeah. but I feel like that's part of the right. experience. What people want is they don't want to just go to some state park nearby. They want that experience of going to. And a, that's and that's why I can studio. charge. That's why I can charge more because yep. when they pay come rent in, on the studio, <laughs> right? Oh, so when man, they come I'm, in, I'm learning shit. I have music. I have music going. It smells good in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, so, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. gonna let you finish. I'm gonna let you finish, then I'll jump in. So they come in. You know, I welcome lights. Uh, the the lighting's kind of like moody a little bit, unless it's daytime because we got these like five eight by ten windows in the studio. Yeah. So if it's daytime, them things are open. So when you walk, how into many the square space, feet is your studio? Uh, the back the back part is like fifteen hundred, and then the front offices are five hundred total. That's the bathroom. The entryway, and then we have two offices up there. One's a lounge and meeting room. Fuck, dude, you're renting. And a review, oh a review. It's like a review, like a like a review room. Like we got like a TV in there. I got the the uh, uh. the PlayStation and Switch in there. Like <laughs> it's my it's my office away from home. Like it's it's really yeah. a chill spot. Cam, you had a, you had a rebuttal. So yeah, it's not even a rebuttal. It's just an add on because as, you know he said he he um goes to studio. Me, I'm not primarily a studio shooter. I I like to shoot outdoors. Um, mm-hmm. I, it's it's what I prefer to do. That's just my go to style. Like for me, if somebody says like yeah, we want to shoot in studio. Okay, I have two studios that I'll I'll tell them like hey, this is when we're going to be there. Yada yada yada, and then that rental fee goes into what I normally charge. Exactly. But if you just want to shoot, you know, outdoors, you want to shoot my style outdoors, urban. Okay, you know, if you don't have a location in mind, then I'll throw out some suggestions of places right. that I've already wanted to shoot, depending on you know what your style is. Like right. if you're just somebody that just wants to go out and shoot, you take you somewhere I have wanted to go for a while, and and that gonna, and you should we're gonna run it. But and you should if someone if someone approaches you. You have the control. I, I don't. I don't. I don't care what anybody else says. It's it's who approaches who. Well, I, I actually even say yeah. that because like even I've approached some people and said, "Hey, this is the idea I have. This is the location. Let me know." Did they you think. did they have idea and location in mind? Nah. I then mean, that's, like, then, then that's, yeah. then that's go. I it's, love exactly. it's, it's full gold right there. I I've had in the past uh, myself experience this and other people I know where someone will approach them for a photo shoot and you know people will talk about it though you know i've even been like oh yeah we can go shoot here here's this idea that i have and they go great here are my rates and i go i'm sorry fucking what bitch no when i'm not paying (laughs) shit you came to me give them the old philly roast at that point (laughs) yeah i mm -mm. (laughs) I'm not doing that. Like if yeah, I approach no. you, I I'm, I'm I don't expect you to pay me. I'm actually if I've, I've paid models yeah. in the past. Like I've, yes. I've if I really want to work with a model and I like their body of work and I know that they can give me the the look and the vibe that I want, I'm gonna pay mm-hmm. them. I'm gonna ask them what are they what are their <laughs> rates, and if I can't pay them now, I'm gonna get the money together because I if I and really want them, them for this look exactly. and then pay like, them. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, I want, because I, I want them have, to do the same for me. You know exactly. what I'm saying? A hundred percent agree with you. Because like, there's actually this young lady that I um, reached out to, said, "You know, we should work together." She's like, "All right, here's my rates." I'm like, "Cool, I can't get to you right now, but when I can, we're gonna kill it." They're like, "All right, cool, they us. We'll stay in touch." <laughs> exactly. Slim, I'm curious. So we always talk about art versus content here. We talk about uh, Instagram being. Uh, a husk of what it used to be, right, from its former glory days, depending on where you're coming from with Instagram. It's still a great place to, to, to make a career. I just got 200 bucks from Instagram based off of Reels, so at least they're fucking paying, right? Um, but I'm curious, like, you're an artist. Mm-hmm. Um, where do these – where are these – maybe this is like an existential question. Where are these photos that you put so much time, blood, sweat, and tears, money, equity into? Where are these photos, like, supposed to live? Like, you know – Coming up in like the Robert Ford days, like photos 
were like in magazines and in museums and like installations, you know, shit like that. Uh, now they basically kind of live and die on Instagram. Like, are you cool with that? Or where do you see photos living in the future? Prince. I think Prince are coming back. Oh, talk to me more about that. Why Prince, do you think so? And Prince how do you feel? And fo- Prince and photo books. Um, I feel like there's a transition of people, and this is why people want to lowball you. It's just photos. Like once I post them, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. if you can give them something tangible, something to to hold or keep with them, it lasts longer. You know oh, what I'm saying? Hey, they can they can hold damn. it, and that's and that's also why I'm. I say that I'm more of a creative than just a photographer. Like I, I want to create images that you like so much that you would want to get printed and hang up in your house mm. or, or turn into a photo book. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's, mm-hmm. that's where I'm going. And that's where Cam, I feel Cam, like I, I couldn't tell if you agreed with that or not. At, at first I did kind of disagree. I, at first I did kind of disagree, but then I remember the situation that I recently came across. I was like, damn, he's actually right. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Tactile, like, what do you call it? Um, media. People like touching shit. <laughs> People like touching shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I think it's coming back. You're right. David's been saying this for a minute. He's been screaming on the roof. Now, let me ask you photo this. Books. Now, do you think it's, you know, which version do you think is coming back at? Is it coming back as just prints or are people coming back? Is it coming back as NFTs? I don't want to go into the full NFT debate. I don't want to go into the full NFT. I will NFT leave talk. this studio. I, we, we I will. Go. Stop. Stop it. Stop I can it. hang with this conversation. I, no, I understand because we're talking about ownership of, of the image. I don't know. The I ownership, wanna, the royalties I don't of wanna, it. I don't want to dive into I'm just saying. You brought it up. I don't want to dive into it. I don't want to I'm going to say my piece. I'm going to say my piece. Give me the FT. Fungible token. I I did a lot of research on <laughs> NFTs, and I recently went to the um the photographers I know a girl of America who's making conference, a killing right now. The photographers of America conference in uh DC in mm-hmm. January or February, whatever. And oh, yeah, I, and I, I remember that. On, I remember I remember seeing yeah. you post stuff about that. Yeah, and I and I and I sat in on the NFT thing because I was curious, you know. Mm-hmm. And they had an artist, they had a um composite artist up there that put puts together images and they're yeah. it's cool stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And he he makes money selling NFTs. Um, I don't see the profit in buying NFTs, <laughs> but yeah. if people want to buy them, buy my stuff, then so be it. I mean, that's cool. You know, um, you own that digital copy, but you can't print it. You know what I'm saying? Well, for example, well, let, let me try to. Mm-hmm. I, we, we, let's yeah. get, we, we should get off the fucking NFTs. Let's get. I don't want to exactly. go down. That's I, I, just, I don't want to dive into this. Well, yeah. I don't want to dive into, into it. it Thank you but for sharing your piece but I, on it. <laughs> but but I have but I have considered it, and the way I was going to do it is that I was going to do one of one prints. So if you bought an yes. NFT, you also got a one of one print with it. So you actually had something tangible. Um, Damn. That's you know. the only way it ma- that's the only way well, to really what if you it, sold make what if you sold an image that was an work. NFT? God damn it, we said we're going to get off of this. But what if exactly. you sold an image that was an NFT and you sold the image for $2000, mm-hmm. right? It's a $2000 NFT, it's non-fungible, it's an image, it's a still, it's a beautiful photo, and anybody who buys it and you you can say up to 10, you can say up to 100, you can say however many. Anybody that buys it gets uh, photo shoots for the rest of the year, right? Like something that l- is lucrative and makes sense. Maybe it's not two grand. Maybe it's eight grand. Whatever that is, yeah, like is something like that interests you. That. <laughs> it oh, had to be more than that. But I can see, I can see attaching some type of service or something else to the NFT. Yeah, like a, a I don't, contract. I don't see, I don't see just selling a digital copy of the photo because people can just <laughs> right click and save the photo and then they have the photo too like i just that's the part of the nft that i just don't i i just don't but you get. can't print screen you can't take a picture of money and then use the picture of money to go to your local grocery store and buy something you know we're not doing the nft thing okay another question uh, uh slim peter mckinnon <laughs> right, is he is he is he good or not go <laughs> good at what is he a good photographer or, or not I think good. he's a good videographer. I don't. I don't. I don't think his photography is that good. Well, why? Why? When that's how he started. He's an average photographer. He's 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 average. Like like. What makes him average? He I mean, has shit composition. I've been saying this. 
He doesn't compose like, photos. His stuff is like his stuff is things. like really basic. Like so, I break down he photography. A basic I, I break down photography into three things. Three things. Let's go. One is the quality. Um, two is like the subject matter of the thing. Like, what are you actually shooting? And mm-hmm. then um, the third is like presentation. Like how how you how you cropped it or exhibit how it. you how you oh, exhibit it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? How you, how you I, gave I, I it will, to us. I will say that like his, the stuff that we see on his his personal page is very very average. But I am a big fan of his product. Like the the time he puts in the time and quality that he puts into his product photography is mm-hmm. actually very very. And that's what got that's how he got started was taking pictures of like card decks of cards and shit like because that. It, so, like right? Because yeah, because like he doesn't just you know sit it here and you know say boom that's the image. But like you can tell there's like a story some intention behind, behind it. it. Yeah. Or like there's, yeah. yeah, there's intention. Like even one of his videos, you see how he goes to an antique store and finds stuff. To you know, build this image like your like his his product work is exceptional. Slim, how do you grow your brand in like nowadays? Like, do you just kind of keep doing what you're doing? You know, you got to make rent with your studio. You kind of just keep doing what what brought you to the dance. What's working, or like, what are some new? Like, are you implementing reels? Are you implementing Facebook ads? I mean, gee, I, I don't know. I, I bet haven't. If you I, did. I haven't done any, crush. any Facebook ads. Like okay, ninety percent of my business comes from word of mouth. So do you do you even post on it Facebook? I mean, I try. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. I try like like when I post to Instagram, I try to connect it to Facebook. You know, hey, yo, I don't listen, I don't post listen, directly listen, on Facebook. I'm, I'm, I, slim, I'm slim. I'm not gonna lie. My clients aren't on Facebook. If you don't slim, post on Facebook, I'm not trust me, lie. it's fine. Like, like Facebook kills your photos worse than worse than IG. So yeah, I'm you not have gonna better lie, Slim. You are you are genuinely when that question is asked. I've I've asked that question. I've had that question asked to me. You gave the most honest answer I've ever heard. I mean, I try. Like, <laughs> it happens sometimes. If they make it, if they make it, if they make it there, they make it. But like yeah. I was saying, my clients, my clients aren't on Facebook. Exactly. So, and that's um, I, I think that that's like another thing when people want to post stuff on Facebook. I always think to myself, like, who are you trying to get the like, who are you trying to get business from? Because if they say, oh, I'm looking for people who really want to start getting into modeling and they're in their mid to early 20s. It's like, I don't they think not they're on Facebook. Facebook, man. Like, I don't they're, think that's they're on it. they're on Instagram <laughs> and TikTok. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But if someone says, sure. I want the old the old people money it's like oh, facebook all the way yeah facebook yeah. all the way or linkedin or linkedin i mean if you want to yeah. if you want to get into like corporate yeah. you know corporate headshots, headshots. and whatnot yeah. or, or brand or branding with older businesses and stuff like that facebook yeah. and linkedin of course um, yeah. slim are you comfortable disclosing you. oh go ahead no 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 you can't you go first actually and i think all all of you will be able to add it add in onto this one but um let's talk about boca real quick because it seems like there's this stigma behind mm-hmm. boca nowadays where it's like you know boca if it's boca behind it, it's a shit photo or it's a good photo when it's like oh just boca's just fucking pretty it, it looks nice let me enjoy it but there's also mm-hmm. this the you know there's good boca and it's bad boca and there's pointless w- boca they, they, that's that's bad. But then that really but then that really comes into play here. Like, what is the point of Boca in photography? Because I mean, the, the point, point I don't the, use the, it a the lot point, at all. I know you I, don't. I, 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 I know you don't. Your photos are tack sharp from foreground to background. What are you shooting at like F eight? Uh, F nine? You you're shooting at like F twenty two. That's F twenty two all the way. No, it's, it's, it's no. up there like F eight, F nine. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, Cause I'm, so cause I'm in the studio. Last time, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So when's the last time you shot at like f two or f one point four or f my 1. my 8. lens on my R six is the twenty four to one o five. No 100. fucking way. It's the one o five. No way. F four. Which means the yeah, lowest the it goes. F four starts at yeah, four. Yeah, the f four. The lowest it goes is f four. Not that much. I don't, I don't need any. I don't need anything less than that in studio. Well, I, I have light. In studio, you don't. You don't need it. Like you so, can push that as far as you can. 
But yeah, okay. so I, 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 think, I think Boca. I, I think Boca is more yeah. for video, man. I, I think yeah, Shelly definitely. Uh, is for video. I, I, I gotta disagree. I disagree. I, disagree. I don't even think it's for video. I think it's for cinema. Boca well, you know what cinema. the fuck I mean. You, you know what I mean. Like it's video for is a, not the same as cinema. Image. People, no, people no, we're not doing video. that. It's for a moving image. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to get into semantics, right? <laughs> we're not talking about art <laughs> and photography. Not, like, not, I'm just saying. I it, disagree it, with you because well, I mean, I, I can like, see. So, me, so I like a flat image. I like a like dude. Three point five for like a photo for you know to me is like the lowest I think you should go ever really. Like one point two for a photo is like what are you doing? I only use Boca if I'm shooting outdoors that that makes 100 percent. that makes sense that's where yeah. it comes in because i don't i don't need you outdoors. to i don't i don't need you to see the trees and 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 stuff like that in the background you know you're not i mean you're not unless, like Zack unless snyder it's... shooting army of the dead at point nine <laughs> looked, gorgeous. <laughs> looked gorgeous no it didn't it looked unless like shit. it did so the, i call it boca time... of the dead god damn it boca of the dead jesus <laughs> Fucking flash going in, but the like if so. if I'm so say so when we went when we were talking about like me shooting outside and, and shooting indoors and I said 80 80 percent in indoors that 20 percent outdoors I'm sh- I'm trying to shoot in like a dope ass location I'm not trying to shoot at Armstrong Park yeah Wait, I'm not trying what? to shoot I'm not trying to shoot in yeah. downtown Raleigh you're going down right. you're going to like Asheville where the mountains are. I'm trying to go to the mountains. I'm trying to yeah. go to actually New York City. I'm trying to yeah. go to fucking. Uh, You're making Greece that shit worth it. You're and, making and that shit shoot, worth it. Yeah. And shoot with a fucking uh, mausoleum or something in the background, <laughs> where I won't boat. I won't. I won't blur that out. Like I, I want them to Y'all know that me I'm feel like on a hack. location. I want. I want them to like know I'm on location. Hack. <laughs> God, right, man. So, it's let, like... right, so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. What do you think about the use of drones in portrait photography? Or if somebody uses in a drone. Photography. Let, let me finish. Because it's, it's, <laughs> it's done. It's been done. It's been fucking done. And You're like, not? what this motherfucker People... just say to me? Wait exactly. a second. I had no so idea that, that Cam was like this off the grid. Like, I didn't. I had no idea you were like. I didn't say I is, did it. This is bonkers. I, never, I okay. never said I did it. I'm saying I've seen it done. Cool you're gonna have to you're gonna have to DM me some drone portrait photography. <laughs> Maybe for some like promotional content or some hype content, but like what? Like, I are you see shooting you from to, like a, a sniper? Like a sniper? If you like to go shot? off mountain, right? Right. Yeah, if you wanted to go off okay, mountain, okay, 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 okay. Like that, right. your feet. Okay, if you can't, ground, if right, you right, can't right, get there, there, if you can't get there, use the equipment. To, I, I guess I get that. Okay. I guess. Okay. Cool. I, I, I guess I can. No, I don't. Explain about, it, Cam. Hey, these drones. I'm not these these drones saying, shoot. I, I got. I got to explain it. I got to explain. These it. drones shoot little, in raw. To be fair. Let me let me draw draw you a scenario because and he just said it the way it is. Like if you can't get to it, you can't. You got to use what you got, right? So, for instance, let's say you want to get a shot of somebody at the edge of a building, but you want to line the building up like side by side, like mm-hmm. like side by side. Can you jump that high? <laughs> No, I get it. I, well, I get what you're saying. Maybe I, I get what you're saying. Also, like in, I'm not, in the I'm ocean, not against that right? if it's if there's no other way to get the shot. But if I feel you like have, if you're out in cheaper. a park, if you if you're out in a park or whatever, and you can use your camera and just slap on like a seventy to two hundred and get the shot. Like, why are you using a drone? You're just trying to be fancy no, for no right. reason. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Right? Like, I just feel like there's so many cheaper, extra. easier way. Exactly. That's extra, bro. Like, you're trying to show off. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, look at this food photography shot I got with my fucking Mavic Air Two. Like, but like, but, but like, let's not play like there fucking hasn't what? been some commercials that's been made with a drone that hasn't been shot the way a drone's supposed to be. But there used. are they static images or are they actually video? Because I get it, they're, video. No, they're they're video. But like, so you know the drone, oh, video's they fine. A, they have a they have a gimbal one, right? But they're not actually flying a drone. They're just holding the goddamn thing. What? I, that that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> now, with the Inspire Two, that makes sense because that's what it's built for. And what I, this was with like a Mavic Air Two. Then, look, I'll t- I'll, let me tell you exact exact. Holy smokes! So they literally put somebody on the back of an ATV. He holds the drone, and the ATV drives around while this cat does everything that they're supposed to do. But he's why just doesn't he just the- have a camera? 
Your whole, your whole, you're like, that's like, that's like driving around the street in an airplane. Bro, this <laughs> like, is photography with extra steps. Stop. <laughs> it's like, it's like you, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like, why are you doing this? Like, just pick up a camera. You know, they must not know how to use a camera. They must not know how to use a camera. I feel like, I feel like it's easier to do like, you know, plate photography from like 1898. You know, where you stand there with the thing and just hit the button. Like, I feel like that's easier than what you just described to me. It, it, like, what? <laughs> All right. We're done with that. Like, you it gotta looked, be done with that. It looks no. like some really intricate stuff, but like, Friend, I, stop. it's not Friend that, that, that looks like, do it. that looks like some, um, like when you see the TikTok videos, how I got this shot, like, <laughs> here's the shot. And then they show a video of how I got it. That's yeah. that's that's what that sounds like. It, it does, it, <laughs> it's it's, it's content it's for the sake of content, of not it's necessarily content for the sake photo. of content. It's, it's yeah. definitely one. Of, you know, I'm gonna find that video. I'm gonna shoot it to both of y'all. Please don't. I will end up shooting myself. <laughs> hey, look, it it, it would be better than that last video I sent you. you Dude, that was fucking weird. I don't know why you sent me that. That was that was payback for that bullshit you sent me. <laughs> what you mean? You mean Michael Jackson with the banjo? I gotta send it. I gotta send it to you. To the other two now. I think. <laughs> Let me see if I got it. All right. So uh, as we're wrapping up here, are there any sort of like you want to get your shit in? Want to make the best out of Slim's time? Like any sort of other rapid fire questions you want to ask him? Shit that you actually need answers to? Because I feel like this guy's got it. Oh, I have a question. Yeah, um, if you're me. comfortable with this, time. what what is your what, what's the biggest payday you've ever gotten? Six grand. And walk me through that. How That's you nice. got that? Did you finesse it? What was that like? How did you feel about um, that? So it was a branding client in Atlanta. Um, let me uh, preface this with it was a terrible, <laughs> it was a terrible experience. <laughs> Usually is. If they pay that much, it's gonna be. They were they were a client from hell, bro. Like they weren't prepared. They they were they wanted to control everything. Um, now when you say they, do you mean like this is like some sort of agency, or do you mean it? No, they it, as was, in the um, model? it was a, it was um, I think she was like a um, she had her own brand or something. I don't remember. I wanted to forget it, but anyway, she paid to fly me out to Atlanta. Um, my hotel was oh, well, actually, the hotel wasn't covered because I flew back the same day. So they paid me to fly me out to Atlanta. Um, it was like a a very long shoot. It was like six hours six eight hours or something like that oh, wow. um Smokes. it was like uh we had to pay for the studio um and she wanted to buy the rights to her photos so that's why it was so big oh shit so oh. i sold i sold i sold the rights away which i was okay with because the, ugh, yeah six grand yeah here take them I, i'm not gonna <laughs> post them <laughs> how, how did you get? So, how did you get? How, how many, oh, go so, ahead, Ken. Slim. How many shoots have you done where it's like you know you've done them, but it's like I'm not gonna post these. I, a lot of a lot of shoots like that. <laughs> What's the ratio? Uh, so okay, so there's shoots I post on Instagram, and then the shoots I just put on my website so people know I shoot it. Um. I'm 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 a strong uh, advocate. Which one's for more important to you? That uh, Instagram is more, more important to me because Instagram is what I want to shoot. How many make the cut for Instagram ratio wise? <laughs> Shit, thirty percent. Like tw yeah, 20, 30 thirty percent. Like it's I I, I only put I only put like my my favorite stuff on Instagram. I, I have clients I that's like. If I know my I know my photos are top notch because I made it to the Instagram. Yeah. So do you do you ever have a client that sees your stuff on Instagram and they're like they ever reach out to you like hey are you ever gonna post post my photo up and you're like no. No, uh -huh. I haven't. Thank God, because that's gonna be an <laughs> awkward conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I just have clients that be like, when can I post? And I'm just usually like. Post post what you want. Um, I mean, now, especially, wait, wait, so why, especially if you paid. Why do they ask that? Like, especially if you paid. If question? you paid for them, those 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 you have you have limited rights to post your photos when you want. It's like, like I've had people. Out, like, I've sent the photos out, and I'm not even thinking about the photos at this point. Like I'm done. We we I edited. We shot. You going about your day. You you paid me my money. 
we good to go. And it's we like, good. hey, when can I post the photos? You got them. Right. Whenever you fucking you want to. This is whenever you want to. You pay me. <laughs> They're yours. Go ahead. Um Mazel and, and to go back to Nive's question, um yeah. I'll re I'll repost every, everyone's photo that tagged me. If they tag me, I'll repost it, but I'm not giving it oh. uh space on my page. Like you repost it on stories, right? Yeah. I'll repost it on so, stories. Okay, so now let me ask you this. Because you know, as it post is post that we intentionally put our our stuff up there. Now, with your stories, are you the same? Are you as intentional with your stories as you are with your post, or are you a little more have a little more leeway with that? Man, I I'll, I'll repost anything. Mm-hmm. I post funny stuff. I post reels. I post stuff I want to get off my chest. Like I feel so like the just, story, the story just, is like this. Th- th- that's when you stories. get to know who I am. Like it, yeah, it's yeah. through it through my stories. You you'll so know you know who I am people, through my people, stories. So people can say you can say people like do you, you tell people like listen you go through my posts you know you gonna, you gonna like what you but like if you go through my stories <laughs> you gonna be sitting there for a while. <laughs> right. <laughs> can you walk right. me through how you got that studio before we wrap up? That's my final question. It's just like that and seems I got like one such after a that. big. Okay, great. That seems like such a big. Um, commitment, right? Like, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I've I've helped people move into studio, studios, and I've always asked them, like, you know, what's the rent here? And I'm like, God damn, I can't do that. I'm not ready to do that. Um, but you totally utilize it. And then the, what you sold me on, I wasn't sure if it was you or David who said it, but the experience, that's what they pay for. The experience. Yeah, you have, like, to, you have to, to give them studio. an experience. And the one of the biggest pushes for me getting my own studio is because I'd walk into other people's studios and it's dirty or they don't have things that they said they have or it just doesn't feel good. Um, and they're usually owned by non-photographers. They're just owned by people that want to make money. But when you, when you actually walk into a studio that's owned by a photographer that actually uses the studio, you know that like as soon as you walk in, it's like, Oh, he got stuff that I need. Like that he actually yeah. takes care of this space. You know what I'm saying? How did you, how'd you get there, man? Like um, when did you believe in yourself and pull the trigger? The pandemic, the pandemic Explain. really, the pandemic really pushed me to, to say to myself, I, I really need my own space. Like I, I can't, I can't deal with, um, places getting like regulations down, and like regulations all yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. So, um, like I, um, damn, I had a question now. now. Oh yeah. Yeah. So why studio over, um, out, outdoors? Why studio? Because I can control it. I, I'm not a control freak in a sense, but I can, I can control what's going on in the studio. I don't have to worry about the sun going behind the clouds. I don't have to worry about stuff getting overexposed. You can from from midnight to five a.m. If you I can to. shoot any time of the day and give me and give you the same lighting. So you're a creative control freak. You're not a control yeah. freak. Control I want freak. I want to be able. I like yeah. I like I like being able you know on the run yeah. to to figure it out and stuff like that out out in outdoors. I'm not against it, but in the studio, I I have a little bit. I have more freedom. I'm not constrained. Like I feel like outdoors, you're you're at the mercy of the outside. Mm-hmm. So, uh, <laughs> but in the you, studio, so... I can I can cultivate an experience. I can have the light set up a different way. I can I can you know I, just, I can just do more. So have you ever come to a point when you're shooting in studio and you feel like all your lighting and stuff is starting to look the same, or have you ever hit that point where it's like? Dang, I'm shooting in the studio too much. I just need to get outdoors, you know, maybe one time just to re- I, recharge. I don't, I don't because my studio is also a natural light studio. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, he said that with the, uh, you said what, five, eight by ten windows? These windows are huge. If you, if you go to um, my page, you'll see uh, Creative Camp Studios tagged and, and look at the one of the videos of the space. It's huge. It's a beautiful space. I mimicked it after like the studios over in L.A., how they have like the concrete floors, mm. um, the white walls. And it's just like big open space yeah. that you can just do whatever you want. A lot to of do bounce, actually, with the white walls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, the, and they're very, David. very high ceilings. So um, when I have um, people come in that want to do video and stuff like that, they can... They can crank up C stands and everything. Exactly. Now, David, what's your do, what's your final question? Though? I want to get. To oh, it was. Question. This is the. This is the. This would be the last question before we all sign off. So, if anyone else still has questions, keep going. 
Yeah, okay. please. We don't want to. We don't want to. I still, I, I still got time. So. Oh, if you got time, then we don't need to wrap. But this will be the longest episode I think we've done. And if you're good, we can keep going. Actually, I mean, I'm looking first, at the time it's, now. It's the, it's the first I, episode. Actually, I um, <laughs> actually, I will need to bounce soon because I have editing I need to do for tomorrow. <laughs> All right, let me let me ask you this. So, Cam, um, bonus when round. It, when it comes to you know, it, I'm gonna just rapid fire what you went on with studio stuff right now. So your studio, your studio shooter, you established that you love your lighting. What's one? What's your go-to lighting style? One light. One light. Okay. Fuck, one light. man. Okay. The the bulk. Let me let me look at my Instagram real quick, so I know I'm not lying to you. That's got to be a flash. Of course, yeah, destroy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, a Godox. 80 percent of the shoots. 80 percent of the shoots are with one light. Why? One light. Because I like my shadows. I like my moody shadows. Like I like. Okay. I like the drama. You know what I'm saying. And I can soften those shadows. I can make those <laughs> shadows hard. You know, switching out the modifier. I can do a lot with one light. And yep. I started with one light. And when I teach my classes, I teach with one light because most photographers can at least afford one light if, if, if they really needed to. Um, and it's just more, it's more, it's more, more mobile, you know, because you can put a, um, a flash, uh, one of the, um, uh, what's they called? The, um, the ones that go on your camera, but you can also just remote them. Speed uh, lights, speed lights, speed lights, speed lights. Yeah, mm. I don't use speed lights, but you can just put a speed light on a on a, a stand and and use that and put a modifier yeah. on that. So I, I most of the time I'm shooting only with one light, and it's usually um, up higher higher than the uh, model's head. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll even dome the light with like a seven foot mm -hmm. umbrella um, mm -hmm. to like cascade the light down. Um, wow. But Down. lately, I've been using the seven foot umbrella, um, reverse flash umbrella, so the light kind of goes into the umbrella and bounces out. Yeah, bounces. Yeah. Yeah. I'll use yeah. it with a diffuser and sometimes without a diffuser. Okay. Um, <laughs> so but yeah. what? Um, what are so what are? Let's say you're um, an upcoming studio photographer. They're looking at your page. Who are some people that you think they should also look at um, for inspiration? Studio photographers. Hmm. You want to know something? Uh oh. Most of the photographers I like are like in Atlanta and California. Um. I can't even think of his name. Um, Cam. Uh. That's my name. Stroud. Uh, I did Cam, live in Cam, Georgia. Cam. I did live in Atlanta. But he does. He does a lot of celebrity <laughs> photography. Does he do a, a lot, lot of, of like celebrity. drone work? A lot of drone photos? Or <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hmm. I'm just kidding. Um, but he does a lot of like really dope, um, hmm. really dope uh, in studio work with like celebrities and stuff like that. And he does mm -hmm. these really elaborate sets. Um, I think I know who you're talking because he he uses a hustle blob, right? Yeah, I think I know who you're talking about. I'm, I I can't remember his name. See, he put me on the spot. Right. I can't remember his name. But he's the man. But he's the man. Got it. But he's dope. He's dream, dope. What's your dream setup? Dream setup. Mm -hmm. As in what? Just a camera. I I, I want to get an R5. Those I just don't. I just. Man. I just don't. I just don't see me needing that many megapixels for the for the photos I take, unless I'm doing a billboard. Well, why not the R? Because the R has more megapixels than the R6. Right, but it doesn't have the that R6 follow has focus. Uh, has ibis. That 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 focus, man. That that follow yeah. focus yeah. is well, beautiful. Yeah. I mean, the focus on I my guess. R5. I mean, R isn't bad though. It isn't bad, but I tried it, and mm -mm, it ain't the same. I say but in I a I say by the end of the year, Slim's gonna be shooting on an uh on on a Sony camera. What? No. Yeah. That color yeah. science? No way. Never. Yeah, it's come a long way. Thank you. Thank you. It's come a long way. It's come a long way. The color science. The A7R4 is uh, gorgeous. 
for photos. Like, I believe it, and I've seen some. Ve- That's why I said I respect Sony. I respect a lot Sony. of characters. Believe it. I, li- I like Fuji too. <laughs> Fuji. I've seen some very beautiful photos with f- with a Fuji camera. Fuji's good. All right, Dave. Dave, I want you to ask your your big be all end all question, and we'll wrap ah, up. Yes. And I'll, I and got I got have... everybody's socials pulled up. Perfect. All right. Slim, if you were to be approached by a brand new photographer who wants to get into the game of photography just in general, what mm-hmm. do you think would be the most important piece of advice for beginner photographers to hear that are just getting started in the game? Keep shooting. Like, e- even if you're not getting paid for it, um, even if you don't have an amazing camera or amazing equipment or amazing subjects, keep shooting. Like, I am where I'm at today because I, I wanted to get better, and I knew that it, it it's it's almost like a sport. It's almost you know what I'm saying you got to keep practicing. You gotta you gotta put in the work to get reps. the results. You gotta put in the reps, and and the more you do it, the more you will will figure things out as you go. Like I didn't have like a, an incredible mentor. I didn't go to school. I was on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? I was on YouTube. And I saw them do such and such with such and such light. And I, and I booked a studio or I went outside and I tried it and trial and error, like just keep, keep shooting. Like don't, don't let, um, stuff, material things stop you. If you really want to do this now, if you're just a hobbyist, then, I mean, that's just what you want to do. But if you're serious about it, Keep keep shooting and don't be afraid to ask questions of people that are where you want to be at. Could not have which said it what, better myself. Which is what I did today. I asked a bunch of questions that I didn't know Dick about. So I really appreciate <laughs> that, man. I want to thank I want to thank Slim for for coming on. And you can follow Slim at the Slim Creative on Instagram. Something tells me if you're listening to this, you're already following him. But if you're not, you're definitely yeah. gonna want to check him out after this. Um, mm-hmm. obviously you can follow David at the David Legowski, uh, both on, uh, Instagram and TikTok. Uh, what about your YouTube, David? Is that also it's the just David, David Legowski? Lega- no, no, it's not the David Legowski. It's just David Legowski on. Okay, great, great, great. And then you can follow Cameron Stroud by images at images by cam on Instagram. Fellas, thank you guys so much for joining us. This was an all timer. Probably my favorite episode. Absolutely. Oh. Definitely. Thank you guys so much for watching. Follow us on Spotify. Follow us wherever you listen to podcasts. Appreciate you guys. Like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys next week. Deuces.